Hi everybody, I'm Sergio with Mobility Direct and welcome to our YouTube channel. Thanks for stopping by. In today's video, we're gonna show you how to unbox and assemble the Golden Technologies Buzz Around LX model. Now, before we get started, I do wanna take the time to mention a few quick things. Number one, if you want a copy of our brand new product catalog, it's free, it has all of our top selling products. It's got some coupon codes in there. All you have to do is go to our website, www.mobilitydirect.com. Click on the green button at the top of every page that says free catalog. Fill out that simple short form that pops up and you'll get one in the mail within one to two weeks tops. Or you could just call the number at the bottom of the screen, ask one of our sales representatives to mail it to you, just provide them with your mailing address, or you could just click right there, it'll take you right to the form to fill out. It's super easy to do it that way. I also wanna say that if you stay tuned to the end of this video, you could learn how to win a free mobility scooter like the ones behind me here. We give one away once a month to a random subscriber of our YouTube channel, so make sure you stay tuned to the end to learn more about that. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna unbox and assemble this. It came in yesterday. It was raining a little bit, so the box is a little bit warped, but that's okay. Their products are packaged very well. You are gonna need a knife and a few tools, but we'll walk you through the entire process. So I'm gonna start off by cutting the pallet straps. Be careful if you have a pair of scissors. That would be the safer route. I'm just using my handy pocket knife here. So once you get the pallet straps off, because it does come on a wooden crate or a wooden pallet, I should say. We removed it from the wooden pallet. You wanna make sure to inspect the box, make sure it's not crushed or anything. If it is, you know, you're perfectly in your uh, rights to go ahead and refuse that delivery. Now keep in mind that the box itself can be a little bit damaged, but you don't want to have the box completely crushed. If it's completely crushed, it's perfectly fine to refuse the delivery. You want to take pictures, send it over to our customer service department so that we can get you a new shipment right away. And there is shipping insurance on these products when they're shipped, so that's what it's for. You know, you don't want to receive something that's damaged. However, sometimes you do get shipments that look like they're okay, and when you take the box apart, you open it up, there's concealed damage, and you wanna report all of that to our customer service department right away. So upon initial opening of the box, you're gonna see another box, and this, as it says here, contains the charger, the keys, and some plastic shrouds. So this model in particular comes with red panels installed on it, but you can switch them out to blue. And we'll show you how, how all that works here as we start to unbox this. So as you can see, it's pretty well packaged, lots of bubble wrapping. So I'm gonna start taking things apart one at a time here carefully. You wanna be real careful when you're cutting the tape on the packaging for the headrest. That's what this is. So that's the seat headrest. And you definitely wanna be careful when you're cutting the tape that's keeping the plastic on it. Don't cut into the headrest or the seating. And there you go. So that's the headrest. I'm gonna put that to the side and just start to un box and assemble everything else. Now, every golden scooter comes with a safety flag, which you can use to let people know you're coming up from behind them. They can see you from far away. You keep track of your loved ones while they're moseying around the neighborhood with that. Now, off to the right here, we've got your armrests. So I'm gonna go ahead and start taking these off, taking these out rather, and we'll just fast forward through this part. All right, so now we're getting close to the point where we can start thinking about taking out the bulkier pieces. I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the basket, which comes for free. It's a front storage basket. So you can put some things in the front of the scooter. It attaches to the steering column. Now this is a really nice scooter. The Buzz Around LX is the bigger version of the Buzz Around Extreme. So it's gonna have a captain seat, 18 mile range, and it comes with that basket in the front. Nice, um, comfortable captain seat, unlike the Buzz Around Extreme. The, the seat on that one's comfortable, but it's not gonna have the headrest in the full back. So here's the seat. We have the backrest and the bottom part of the seat. I'm gonna grab, this is the universal hitch receiver on the back, there's just a little cover. So I'm gonna grab from here where the, the screw is, grab from here and pick straight up. So this is the seat. Now you can see it's covered in some plastic. I'm just gonna take the time to take the plastic off while I have it here kind of rested on the box. This is just my technique. May not be the perfect technique, but 
It allows me to kind of see what's going on underneath. There is a little plastic cover that you need to remove. That is the mail connector on the bottom of the seat, which attaches to the seat post, which is height adjustable, that attaches to the base. And we'll show you how all that works. I'm gonna put this over here next to the headrest and continue to unpackage. So got a lot of bubble wrap here, a lot of excess pieces of cardboard, which is important. You definitely want this unit to be protected. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna, this is the handlebar assembly, the tiller is the technical term for it. We need to raise this up so that we can get the battery out of the uh, base. So to do that, I know that there is a lever right here, just from working with this product for a while. So this little lever that I've exposed, you need to give it some action. And you can see that it wiggles upwards towards the handlebar, which I'm grabbing onto. So you wanna pull it up and then raise that handlebar up all the way. That's the release lever. And it can also be used to tilt the tiller closer to you or further away from you. So that's the tiller, that's how you drive it. And if you wanna tilt the tiller closer to you or further away, you use that lever right there and you can bring it closer to the seat or further away. Pretty nice, you don't have to bend down and unscrew a knob like some of those other models out there. So at this point, the battery boxes are here. It comes with two battery boxes. So if some of you are familiar with the Buzz Around Extreme, it's the same setup. It comes with two battery boxes that are, um, they connect to one another. So you've got two 12 volt batteries in here, one in each box and it has a convenient handle. So that's one battery box. I'm gonna put it to the side and I'm gonna carefully cut the tape here so I can access the handle on both of them. Makes it a lot easier to take it out. That's the other battery box. I'm gonna go ahead and put that to the side. And we're pretty much down to the last few pieces. Now right here in between the two battery boxes, it was resting right here you've got your seat post. This is a really important piece. Don't wanna miss this piece. So the, the seat post, so you could probably guess, is what's used to attach the seat to the base. And it is height adjustable. So you're gonna need a set of tools to undo that. It's a little hex uh, bolt and a nut with a washer that's curved that hugs around the seat post on both sides. So you can adjust the height of the seat. You've got three different increments, about one inch each. So you can raise that uh, seat height up or lower it, depending on how tall you are. I'll put this to the side next to the seat and get, we'll get ready to remove the scooter. I'm gonna show you a little trick that you can use if you don't have any help. It's a, you know, it's a heavy base, so you wanna kind of do what you can to, if you're alone and you don't have the help, this is what you would do. You're gonna remove the corners from the front. These are just reinforcement corners for the box. And if you have a knife, you can cut the front part of the box out. So I'm gonna cut from here up and we're gonna create like a little garage door for the box. Okay, so there's one side. I'm gonna get here on the other. Nice sharp knife will help. So now, as you can probably imagine at this point, you can roll the scooter out of the box. So there's a handle on the back of the scooter and we're gonna show you here with the camera. I'm gonna unveil it. It's a little plastic cover on it. You've got your handle right here. Now the brakes are always on, it has automatic brakes. You wanna go ahead and trip that into neutral with the switch there. So we put it in the N neutral mode. Now the, the wheels in the back are not gonna be uh, in park mode, you can actually roll it. So I'm gonna pick up from here, I'm gonna lift up, I'm gonna start to roll out of the box. And that is how you get it out of the box if you don't have any helpers around. So we're gonna go ahead and clean up the set, take the rest of the plastic sheeting off, and we'll be right back with you. All right, folks, well, we're back. We cleaned up the set a little bit here in record timing. It only took like a second. And uh, we've got all of our pieces here. So we've got the main base, we've got the battery boxes, armrest, seat post, seat, basket, and the box with the charger and the panels. Now, I do wanna tell you that if you wanna learn about specifications, we're gonna do a full in-depth review video in a separate video. So make sure you subscribe. And if you have this product, 
leave a comment down below. Let us know what you think about it. Let our viewers know what you think about it. So that way they can hear from actual owners of the Buzzround LX how they like it, what they don't like, the pros, cons, etc. Now I've got a specification sheet here which you can access by clicking right there at the top right hand corner of the screen. It'll take you to our product page. You can see all the specs and all the customizable options. You can get a bigger seat. There's a few seat options. I'm going to tell you though it has a 375 pound weight capacity and it can travel up to 18 miles at a five mile per hour top speed. If you want to learn more, I am going to have this specification sheet link in the description as well, like I said, and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can learn more about it. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is install the seat post. And for that, you're going to need some tools. All right, folks, well, I got my tools. You're going to need a six millimeter hex and a 13 mil socket. So you've got to have these tools and to put the seat post in, it's quite simple. You're going to want to first remove the nut from the hex bolt, which I'm doing here. Try not to lose your bolts. Take the washer. Remember the orientation. So you've got the washer, the bolt, uh, the nut rather. Now you're going to push the bolt through, keep the other washer on the hex bolt head. And it's going to, it's very important that the hex bolt head and the washer that's right in front of it go through the back end, okay? So make sure you do that. The hole on the back here, which we're gonna show you, is actually bigger than the hole on the front of the seat post. And the uh, big washer here seats countersunk into that big hole in the back. So if you don't, if you put the, uh, the bolt head through the front end, the seat's gonna be wobbly. So you have to make sure you go in through the back end so that that, washer fits in and you're going to see what I'm talking about here. So, you know, you may want to start off in the middle. So you've got three holes to choose from. The middle is going to be kind of the, the middle height. And then if you need to adjust it from there, you can come back, undo it. You see how that washer fits in that hole? That's the key. It's going to keep it nice and tight and secure. If you don't have it coming in through the back and it goes in through the front, it's not going to tighten all the way. It's going to be loose. So I've got my washer in, put the nut in, now I do want to just put it finger tight and then what I'm going to do to have more room, and this is something you, you should do, you kind of have to do, grab onto the seat post, use this detachment lever. You can actually break this unit down into two pieces as far as the base goes. You can take the base apart, so the front end and the back end. Now you've got plenty of room to, to work with here. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this tool and throw it away because it's not going to work. Instead, you're going to get an Allen key, which it should come with, but it doesn't. I'm gonna personally send an email to Golden Technologies, complain about that, so hopefully in the future they'll start including it. So you've got your six mil Allen key, I'm gonna put it in there, 13 mil socket, and you're gonna just tighten. You're gonna see that it gets real nice and snug. You don't need to go crazy and you know put 250 pounds of torque in there, but you wanna get it until it's hand tight, because especially if you're going to be transporting this on a vehicle lift and it's shaking around, you're going off-road, these scooters are off-road capable, it has suspension, you want to make sure it's nice and tight. And it is, giving it the earthquake test. It's not moving. It's good. So to put it back together, you're going to line up the, uh, the red stickers on the, the front part of the frame with the red stickers on the back part of the frame, which kind of has a hook, and that bar in the front rests right on the hooks there. So we'll line it up carefully and it just clicks into place. Pretty easy to do. So from here, we're gonna grab our battery boxes, put them in one at a time. Be gentle. They should just slip right in. All right, by the way, uh, here's the circuit breaker reset switch. So if you do get hung up, if you're abusing the scooter and going uh, off-road really heavy and going over the weight limit, you might pop a breaker and that's how you reset it. So I'm gonna grab the seat base now so remember I said there's a male connector at the bottom of the seat there? That's the female connector. It's kind of a coated in like a rubbery kind of poly uh, material. So when you're putting it in, it's, it grips it really good. It doesn't come out easily. And so when you go to remove the seat, you have to pick straight up. If you're tilting, it doesn't come out. You see, if I'm just picking up from the front, it won't even move. But if you go straight up, it comes right out. And that's you know, to keep it secure and, and in there nice and strong. So at this point, I'm going to grab my headrest. It's just like an automobile headrest. There's a little button here. You can adjust the height and it's going to click into place wherever you want it. 
Now, as far as the armrests go, they are flip up armrests. By the way, the seat does rotate. So I'm gonna rotate it with this lever. Here's the lever. You can go 360 degrees. It's gonna lock into position. So I'm gonna leave it right here so you can see what I'm doing. This is actually the armrest for the left. I need the one on the right. So the armrest just slide into that sleeve, but you need to loosen this knob all the way so it can slide in. Almost to the point where it's about to fall out. Then put it where you want it. You can adjust the uh, position. So if you need more space, bring it out more. I'm just gonna put it right about there so we have enough room in our showroom, maximize our showroom space. So you can see that, uh, that hand screw threaded bolt is kind of in the way. So you wanna loosen it all the way. That looks about good. And then just put it in the sleeve there. Tighten up and we're good to go. So now you can see on the back, there's that universal hitch receiver. So you can put things like a shopping basket, oxygen tank holder, walker holder, fishing beach cart. By the way, our review video, we're gonna go fishing with this thing and load it up with some tackle, some fishing poles. We're gonna take it to the grocery store. It's a great scooter for all that stuff. So you're not gonna to wanna to miss out on that. Make sure you subscribe so you get notified when our in-depth review video comes out. Now, as far as the basket, it attaches to the front. There's three hooks, three holes for the hooks. Line up the holes with the hooks, push straight down, just clicks into place. Now. The box, out of the box, um, it is gonna come with the steering lock on. To unlock the steering, it's a push, spring-loaded button that you rotate. So you wanna push in and go counterclockwise a quarter of a turn. Now your steering lock is disengaged. The steering lock's basically there so that when you take it apart, put it in the trunk of your car, your steering wheel's not gonna go like this and go crazy while you're taking turns in your vehicle. So it is meant to come apart. I showed you it comes apart, but if you really wanna get familiar with the disassembly process, you're gonna to wanna to check out our in-depth review video. Now, a couple of other things we need to do. Need to get our keys. Need to get our battery box, or our charger, rather. Need to get our user manual. Okay, this is really important, folks. You need to read this. It has a troubleshooting guide. It has instructions on everything. It shows here the three-wheel model and the four-wheel model. This is the uni uh, universal user manual for both the GB119, which is the three-wheel, and the GB149, which is the four-wheel. And we have both of these available, tax-free, free shipping. They're both pretty much the same, except the three-wheel model is going to have a much sharper turning radius. Uh, the four-wheel model is going to be a little bit more stable off-road, but you definitely have more floor space because you don't have the wheel wells like the four-wheel model does. If you look here, the four-wheel model has like wheel wells going over the front two wheels and it takes up foot space. So on the three-wheel model, I can actually put my feet on each side of the front steering column and I've got a lot more floor room. Otherwise, you'd be like right here with the four-wheel model. It'll, you would be blocked off by the wheel wells here and you would be forced to lift your legs up high and put them on top of the, of the wheel wells. So if you don't like lifting your legs up to be seated, that's something to consider. All right, so here are your keys. They come in a little bag. You get two keys. I would recommend not keeping both keys on the same key ring. Keep one in your car, keep one at home, give one to your loved one in case they need to come rescue you because you lost your key. It happens. So to turn the unit on, put the key in the ignition. It's beeping five times. What does that mean? Well, if you look at your user manual, it basically means that your automatic brake is not engaged. So we're gonna turn it off. And remember earlier, we rolled it out of the box. So it's in neutral mode. If I push the unit, it moves. That is not what's supposed to happen. So you wanna put it in drive mode. So now the automatic brakes are engaged. I can't push the unit. So with the drive mode engaged in the lock position, we can come back to the steering, turn it back on, and it's gonna work just fine. It's gonna to respond to the throttle commands and it works the way you want it to. So you could turn the speed down, turn the speed up. You've got a horn. Your charging port now, which is really important, we're gonna to need to charge it for the first time. You don't wanna go out and start using it right away. You wanna take the charger out and you wanna give it a good initial charge. Okay, if you can, just leave it overnight. So we're gonna take the charger. It comes with the wall outlet cable and then, then the XLR charging cable, which plugs right into the actual scooter. You can get an adapter 
which is convenient if you want to leave your scooter in your garage or in your car. Like if you go on a vacation, you want to leave the scooter in the car, but bring the battery boxes inside to your hotel room. There's a little adapter you can get and it's an accessory that will allow you to charge the batteries while they're disconnected from the scooter. Without that, you need to actually physically plug this in to the charging port, which is here. So the charging port's right here. And this is the XLR three pin barrel connector. So we're going to plug that in here and this end is going to plug into the wall. All right, so I plugged it into the wall. Now the light is on showing that it has power. When you plug this in, the other light's gonna turn on. By the way, that's the Eagle HD scooter. You're definitely gonna wanna check out the review video we have on this model. It's the most off-road capable scooter designed by Golden Technologies. Awesome scooter, super nice, great for going on the beach, off-road, you name it. So now that we, um, we plugged in the charger to the wall, I'm just gonna plug this back in again, stay on topic here. And once that's in, you could see the other light turned on and the power light turned green. So it's charging. Once it's fully charged, the charge light will turn red or turn green. So it's red while it's charging. I don't know if you can see that there and then it'll turn green once it's fully charged. So you wanna leave that on until it turns green at the very least. Now, a couple things to keep in mind. The first time you use this machine, it's not gonna reach an 18 mile full charge. In fact, it might never reach an 18 mile distance on a full charge, depending on what kind of terrain you're on. If you're going up hills and on grass the whole time, you're probably not even gonna get close to that. So the 18 mile range is gonna be the maximum range if you're going on a flat surface with a minimal load. You know, this thing is rated for 375 pounds, but when they test it and get the 18 mile range specification, the manufacturer is most likely using like a 180 pound to 200 pound person. So keep that in mind, folks. They're advertised for 18 miles, but they're not always gonna hit 18 miles. Also, the first time you use it, it's not gonna reach that full potential because the batteries have been sitting in a warehouse for a long time. The second time you use it, it's gonna do a little better. The third time, a little better. Fourth time, a little better, etc. Once it's broken in and you've used it and cycled the battery in, what I, mean, what I mean by cycling it is, you've drained the battery, you recharged it. You've drained the battery, you've recharged it. Once you've cycled it like that a few times, it's gonna get the optimal performance, okay? So keep that in mind, folks. Don't be, don't be shocked or disappointed when you don't get 18 miles or even 15 miles the first time. That's, that's normal. These SLA batteries need to be broken in. Sealed lead acid batteries, that's just the way they work. All right, so we're gonna keep it on the charger. We've got a few other things to go over. We've got our safety flag here, which, uh, personally, we don't really use them, but a lot of people love them, so I'm going to show you how to install it. There's a little breaking point, halfway point here, and on the back, you've got a pouch. On the pouch, you've got a little stitch here that allows a perfect fit for the flag to kind of go down in there. So now you've got your safety flag. Now the last thing I want to show you is how to change out the panels. So if you want to go with the blue color instead of the red, that's up to you. Nothing wrong with that. So you can take the uh, blue colored panels and they basically just pop off. You want to be careful when you're popping them off so you don't break anything. But essentially, you know, the top panel here pops right off. You want to probably get like a little flat head. You could use a knife, but just be careful, folks. You want to pay attention to the design, how it clips in. So there's a clip in the the back here and a clip in the front. Essentially, you need to loosen up, put a little tension there where those clips are and get it to pop out. There you go. So that is how you take it out. And the new one just clicks right into place. You could do that for every single piece here. You know, there's, there's panels for each piece. So if you go through the entire scooter, which we'll run through just to make this video as thorough as possible. You want to pay attention to the clips, okay? So here are the clips for the, the one underneath the one we just did. You've got a clip there and clips here. So what I would recommend is going for the clips on the side here, which have like a little bit of a angle to them versus this one, which is like a hook. Once you get these out, that one should come out pretty easily. So we're gonna start off from the sides here. I'm gonna remove the basket just to give me some room and not feel like I'm cramped. All right, so what we've just realized here is that if you go on the right side, it comes out a lot easier. So go on the right side first 
And then there is Velcro in there, which I heard, and it should come right off. So we're actually gonna change this one to blue all the way through. Now with the hook, you wanna put that in first, pop it in. It's in there like swimwear. I'm gonna put this back on and work our way down. So what do we have? We've got the back two panels and the bottom front panel. Let's go ahead and make some room here. All right, so here we have the blue front panel, which if we're paying attention to the uh, clips, there's two here on the front, which I'll probably work with first. And so this, the clips are gonna be on the back sides here where it straightens up. So I'm gonna try and get in there without damaging anything without scratching my brand new scooter. It's always the goal. And just finagle it a little bit, be gentle, pops right out. Okay, so we'll do the same thing here. And here it pop into place. Now you know it's good. Let's move on to the back. All right, so we can see we've got some Velcro on the back panels here. Clip in the front, clip in the back. Now it looks like we've got a screw hole here. Now I'm hoping that there's no screws to deal with, but we're gonna find out. No screw there, no screw there. So I just visualize underneath there's no screws. So we should be able to just get up in there, pop that out, good to go. So this, would technically, I think they're interchangeable, so you shouldn't really have to worry about which one goes in first. Yep, we're in. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the back. And we're pretty much done with the whole tutorial here. Pretty straightforward, right? Golden Technology, by the way, makes products that are built to be really easy to use in general. I mean, that's one of the reasons why we love recommending Golden Technology products. Not only that, they're one of the only manufacturers that include a one-year limited warranty on the battery, two years on the electronics and the drive frame, and a lifetime limited on the frame. Not only that, they include a one-year repair contract. So if something does go wrong, as long as it's covered by warranty, guess what? You don't even need to leave your home. A technician will get dispatched to your home to fix the warranty-related issue. And that's a huge peace of mind. Well, folks, that's gonna wrap up the video. Remember, look out for our in-depth review video where we're gonna test this thing out at the grocery store, fishing, off-road, you name it. My name is Sergio, I'm with Mobility Direct. If you have any questions, anything that I didn't cover, leave them in the comment section below. We will reply to your comments or you can call our friendly non-commissioned sales experts. They'd love to answer your questions. Last but not least, I told you if you stay tuned to the end, I'm gonna tell you about the giveaway. So again, once a month we give away a mobility scooter or a power wheelchair to a random subscriber. All you have to do is subscribe and leave a comment. If you comment and you're subscribed, we can potentially pick you to win a free mobility scooter. That's it, it's free, there's nothing to it. So what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time, folks. Have a great day.